If you want the best performance out of your car audio system, you're going to need to upgrade your speakers. But with so many different types of speakers available, what should you choose? In this video, we're gonna take a look at the different speaker types so that you can make a better choice when it comes to planning your car audio system. Let's take a look. So before we talk about the different types of speakers, we need to consider what our goal actually is when we're upgrading a car audio system. Our goal is to reproduce music across the whole bandwidth of human hearing. In other words, the bass from 20 hertz all the way up to the upper high frequencies of 20,000 hertz or 20 kilohertz. Keeping this goal in mind, we can start to understand why there even are different speakers in the first place and how each of these different speakers can help us achieve our goal. Now, before we get into the different speaker types, I do want to say a quick thank you to our show sponsor, Crutchfield. One of the more challenging aspects of getting speakers for our car is knowing what's going to fit. But with the Crutchfield website, this is a breeze. Using their vehicle selector tool, you can enter the year, make, and model of your vehicle. And if your vehicle is in their library, you can see their research and exactly what will fit in each location. Better yet, when you purchase with Crutchfield, many times on qualifying purchases, they include a speaker adapter and the wiring harnesses that you need to install your gear. If you wanna learn more and take advantage of a special offer for car audio fabrication fans, check out the link here on screen or down in the video description. So for different speaker types, there are two different main categories. You're going to have component speakers, which are also sometimes referred to as separates, or you can have coaxial style speakers. In this case, we have a woofer combined with a tweeter. In this case, a mid-range combined with a tweeter. So let's start with talking about our coaxial speakers. Now, sometimes these are referred to as a full range speaker, but don't let that get you confused because these do have a lower bandwidth that they start at depending on their size. So in other words, Something like this, even though it's a full range speaker, that doesn't mean that it's going to play the subwoofer bass. If you're using a smaller coaxial speaker, you can't expect this little three and a half inch speaker to be reproducing mid bass or even some of the lower vocals. This is going to have a different bandwidth of information. Now, typically with coaxial style speakers, you're going to see these used more frequently in more entry level systems. And that's because they're a lot easier to install. You don't have to worry about coming up with a special location to mount something like a component speaker. But don't let the term entry level confuse you. That doesn't necessarily mean low performance. It just means that these tend to be a lot easier to install and apply in an application. Now, most coaxial style speakers are a two-way type speaker, which means they combine two different drivers. In this case, we've got the woofer and then we've got the tweeter, but there are also three-way coaxial style speakers where you'll have a woofer, a mid-range and a tweeter, and even there are four-way style coaxial speakers where you would have those three plus something like a super tweeter. Those three-way and four-way style coaxial speakers are more commonly seen with the 5x7 and 6x9 oval shaped coaxial speakers. Now the other big speaker category is component style speakers. This is where each driver is individually used. In this hand, I have a mid-range woofer. This is used for more of the mid-range frequencies, anything between where your subwoofer is going to play all the way up to the high frequencies. And then we have a tweeter in this hand. This is for the high-end frequencies. Now component speakers tend to be better for high-end performance. And there's a couple of reasons for that. One is the crossovers for these speakers are not built into the speakers. A lot of times they're a larger passive crossover like this. This has much better higher end components that are going to give us better sound. Whereas when we're using a coaxial style speaker, you can see that these are the crossovers for the tweeter right here. They are much smaller and not as good. The other advantage of the component speakers is you get more mounting flexibility. In this case, we could have our woofer down in the door. And then if we want to raise the sound stage, we could have the tweeter up in the sail panel or in the A pillar. If we also wanted to make this into a three-way system and have like a three and a half inch component that's handling more of the vocal information, we could put that close to the tweeter in each of those locations. Because after all, we don't necessarily want that information just black into our knee. It's better to use the woofers down in the doors to use that larger airspace to accommodate the mid bass information. There's a ton of different detail that goes into these. And I actually have a full video that explains much more of that detail that you can watch about component speakers. So with the component speaker category and then the coaxial speaker category, you're of course going to see different speaker sizes within each of those. For coaxial speakers, it's common to see three and a half, four inch, five and a quarter, six and a half, and then five by seven 
7s and 6x9s. What is important is you want to consider the bandwidth of information that each of these speakers is designed to handle. And that's something that you can find on the manufacturer's website, or in this case, I like to look on Crutchfield as well. Like I mentioned earlier, a small three and a half inch coaxial speaker with its tweeter here, it's gonna have no problem playing up to the high information, but once we start getting down into that lower vocal range or the mid bass, this speaker is not going to reproduce that. We need to make sure that we combined something like a woofer in that case as part of this system. As far as component speakers go for the different sizes, you're going to have every size under the sun. You're even going to have different tweeter sizes that can be used depending on your application. And for your woofers, you could even have larger drivers, something like an eight inch mid bass speaker. And obviously you want to take into account your vehicle information depending on what could actually work, unless you're considering doing custom modifications to the vehicle. And in that case, you could install large speakers into the different locations as needed as well. Now, I wanted to make sure I mentioned this because it's kind of in a category of its own, but it is definitely an essential part of a good car audio system. And this speaker category is, guys, you wanna make sure that you have a subwoofer. The subwoofer obviously rounds out the system with all the low end bass information for your car audio system. A common misconception is that a subwoofer is only for bass heavy music, something like rap or electronic music. That is not the case at all. Even if you only listen to classical or jazz, having a subwoofer is important because it does reproduce many of the sounds that those different instruments will make. I could talk forever about subwoofers. There's tons of other information that I have here on the channel. If you guys wanna learn more about the different advantages with different sizes of subwoofers and different types. If you guys want to learn more, definitely check out the channel. Don't forget, if you want to learn more about component style speakers, I have a dedicated video here on the channel. And also, if you need help picking out exactly what speaker size you need for your vehicle, definitely check out show sponsor Crutchfield. You guys can learn more about them and take advantage of a special offer for car audio fabrication fans at the link here on screen or down in the video description. A special thanks to Crutchfield for being a sponsor along with Anthony, Mike, Mo, Jerry, Marcos, William, and the rest of the Patreon membership team. A big thanks to all those guys for making these videos possible. Thank you guys for watching.